This is a breakdown of a role I had with Lucas Lepree. If you're watching this, you probably already know Lucas Lepree is the greatest lightweight grappler of all time. And really what you need to know is that Lucas always has dominant grips. He's never at a position with his body, and he's the best, one of the best guard passers in all of jiu-jitsu. He has great balance, timing. He always makes his partner carry as much of his weight as possible, and he really, really has good patience. This role, I just wanted to do better than I did against him last time, which is really the motto in jiu-jitsu, 1% better, trying to get better every day. But you'll see as the role goes on, if you compare it to the first role that I made a video of with a breakdown, I was the first role, I was a lot more willing to give my back. This time, I really wanted to be a lot more patient, even though I know Lucas would get in good positions. And I really wanted to just kind of test it, test myself out against him. So let's break down all the little details and really get in depth of this role. Let's really pay attention to the grips. The grip fight is just so, so important, especially at the higher levels. So you see Lucas's first grip is on my tricep. My left tricep, he's got a hold of the gi material. Now I look to try to pass towards that side. And then I'm going to change direction, start to go the other way. But you can see Lucas had a cross step. He has a spider hook with that left foot on the bicep. See now as I start going to my right, Lucas is able to block it. Now he makes his next grip. He's sitting up. Now he has a 2 on one and I have to take a grip going over the back here. This is usually a good position for me. I can kind of get my head nice and low. But I want to try to land my head basically right in Lucas's sternum, and that's not where I have it. His head is lower than mine, and he's also manipulating my gi, trying to get a grip of the lapel in between my legs. And now he's starting to get up, and he puts me down with a single leg. So here I was kind of trying to find a grip. He got up to his hand right away. I maybe should have looked to pluck that wrist and put him down. But he just got up too quickly, and I wasn't able to recover. And now I'm trying to put him in a guard, and Lucas is really, really good at not being stuck in any guard. See how he's trying to push that De La Hiva hook down with his left hand? I tried to tie up both legs, but he did a slick man little maneuver with his right knee to kind of cut over. And now he's starting to get into his knee cut position, which is his best passing position. See how he has a grip on my lower back, and I'm just fighting to try to maintain distance here. In this position, I really do not want to get flattened out. See where my head is? My head is almost underneath Lucas. That's going to prevent him somewhat from being able to get a cross face. And I also had a grip on the knee here of his pants. Now, I just tried to kind of pull him. That was my best off-balance attempt to try to force his hands to the floor. But he just kind of rode it out. And he still maintained his weight on top. This is what I mean by him forcing a lot of weight on his partner. You know, that was a good recovery. I think he just tried to time a long step pass at the same time as my leg came up and it just very briefly kind of knocked him to his butt, but then he was able to bounce back up and recover. This is an important moment here. He gets the pants again. I grab his ankle and I have a belt grip, but he's able to get right into his knee cut pass. So this was a wrong decision by me. I was still trying to force the De La Hiva. I probably should have just been trying to push away to open up more space because Lucas already has an underhook set with his right arm. He steps over and now he's getting deep into his knee cut pass. One thing with Lucas that I notice is that his head is always down, which is going to increase pressure on your guard passing. And I was pretty proud that I was able to do this. As he tries to go to mount, I was able to trap his right foot and stick him into a half guard. And that's something that people often look to go to mount in Lucas's position, and they'll f forget their, their leg that's kind of trailing behind. He has the knee on belly. He's not as worried about his other foot. You can see my foot already stepping over, and I trap his ankle. So just a kind of neat little trick to prevent yourself from getting mounted when you know the guy wants to go from side control to mount. So I'm able to put him back in the half guard, but I'm still flattened out, which is a major problem for the half guard player. For me on bottom, I have to try to make space. And you see Lucas's head is right next to my head, and it's on the mat. He's not allowing me any space with my left hand to try to push his face or push his shoulder. He's taking everything away. And this is where I really had to fight to be patient and not overreact because any wrong move against Lucas, he's just going to pass her guard. And he's very, very patient. Like I said, he's waiting for what he needs. He's not going to force anything. And now I'm finally get that arm back in front, but he used that timing, like I said, perfect timing to try to pass the guard and get to side control again. So once I he see his left grip with his left hand, he's got a nice cross face and he's able to put my back flat to the mat. Now I'm trying to frame off of his hip to open up space. But again, now he has the pass, and he's just so confident in his passing that a lot of times he won't care if he gets put back in the half guard. He's doing a really good job making me look away, and he's st starting to pull my lapel out, and he pulled it up and trapped my wrist with it. 
which is super annoying, really effective. So now this ties up my arm, and now he goes to mount, and he had a nice high mount there, so I was not able to trap his other foot. And now he had me in, in a bad position here, and I'm starting to look to bump. I was just trying to free my wrist here. See, he tried to pass grips, and my hand came out, and now I bump here, and I'm trying my best to fight to take him over, and I was able to put him to reverse him and put him in close guard. But I think what happened is as I was starting to turn, you watch watch Lucas goes to switch his grip here. My hand comes free. And now as I'm starting to turn, I bump to open up space. Watch Lucas's right hand. It's trying to find my collar here. And now Lucas is re getting ready to go to the back. But luckily I was able to grab that sleeve. He didn't have a post and I kept turning him to that side. And I was able to get the reversal from bottom mount. Right away, he's threatening the back take, which was what I was worried about. But what he did, uh, he threatened a pendulum sweep there to get me to react. And then you can see him start to change his grips. And he actually got me with a straight elbow lock on my left arm. He was able to trap my wrist on his shoulder. And he, he hit me with a really nice straight elbow lock. So restart. Okay, let's really pay attention to the grips again. Because we get to start from neutral here. Lucas sits, I tried to grab his sleeve, and he already has good grips. Look, cross grip De La Hiva, and he's got a nice wrap around the ankle with his right hand. And he's going to start to attack what most people call a cow terra, cow terra ankle lock, which is basically an ankle lock right from De La Hiva, and I tried to invert off of that and attack a Barambolo, but he was doing a really good job just framing, not allowing me to get under his hips, and he gets back up. So he wraps for the De La Hiva. He has really good grips here. I have to control that outside leg. He's starting to apply the pressure for the ankle lock. It didn't cause me to tap and it knocked me down. It didn't really feel too much pressure on it, but it did, moved as a really good job of pressing into you, your knee and knocking you down to the butt. And then I tried to go invert, see how I have a, gri a grip on his belt, but he, May, he had a grip on my shin that whole time, right from the start of the, that movement. And um, he doesn't allow me any space. And then just for like a second that we're both on our butts, that's not a position where he's seen a lot. So he just immediately gets up. That's what I mean. He's never at a position. He gets right to where he wants to be. We get to close guard. And then right away he's looking to stand and break. He goes with the classic knee in the butt. Look at that. Classic guard break and now he's going to look to get to his knee cut position again head really low right on my sternum i have a I had a frame with my right hand there to try to push him away but he just comes back to the other side he never forces anything he just kind of goes side to side kind of interesting to watch so he does he has his head down and watch my right elbow comes in and frames across his chest to make space he looks looks to hit that back step and then he's going to start to get up because the door's closed on the right side, so he starts to go to the left side. He's got a grip on the shin, and he just never, ever lets me establish any type of guard for more than a second. And now he's getting into his position. He's pushing my leg down and looking to untuck the lapel. Now this is a really good position for Lucas because you can look to pass the collar and apply the choke and just use it for leverage to continue passing the guard. It's a last ditch effort. I kind of threw up an arm lock attempt here just to get him to back off. Less experienced people, you might get the submission. And that's not going to work on Lucas Lepre. He just pushes the foot off. And now, not where I want to be turned away. And he's able to get his other hand in the collar. And he circles to north south and gets a really tight collar choke. There was maybe 30 seconds left. It was a five minute round. It's not a whole lot of time, but. Try to go into guard passing here, looking to get a hold of the hip and go in for a stack. But Lucas keeping his shoulders back. I was able to hop over and get a shin staple with my left leg. But he brought his knees in and hit a nice off balance right at the end of the round. So I get underneath the leg. I was looking to get the far collar. Possibly stack him up, but he keeps his hips really, really heavy and in front of me so I can't close distance and get the angle that I need. Tried to hop over, 
but now he has control of the collar with my arm under his leg and then his knees point up and he hit that nice off balance which probably could have led to a sweep if there was any more time left cool so brief reflections on the roll lucas's motto on his website is be precise and it's really true he's really precise with his grips and his maneuvers everything that he goes for has a purpose and be patient in good positions but once you get what you want especially with the grips you got to go uh, if you would like your one of your roles broken down by a world-class black belt like myself, then shoot me a message and we can work out a deal because it's now a service that I offer. So thanks for watching. Bye.